I'll just give you some background on QGene. Um, so if you look for that uh, acronym, QU-Gene, you'll, you'll eventually find a bioinformatics paper that had um, Dean Podlick and Mark Cooper as uh, the authors. And so they developed this back in, I think, 98 or 97. It's in bioinformatics. And um, it's a simulation tool for breeding programs. And over the next, after they went and worked for Pioneer, um, and took those tools with them. The University of Queensland still retains ownership of that tool and they can still give it to people if they want to use it or license it. Uh, for research, it's free. <coughs> Sorry, I thought I had a microphone here. No, okay. So that um, tool is still available, and, but there's not many, much documentation of the graphical user interface because we haven't put a lot of effort into it. We've developed it over a few years on uh, not much funding. <laughs> and so that's the last, uh, it says Delphine Fleury and Ryan Whitford, I think it is, uh, crop breeding methods, uh, methods in molecular biology. It's a Springer 2014 book. So, Adrian, who was a postdoc with me, wrote a sort of a summary of that. So that's probably the most current reference as to what that software can do. So I'll just give you some background. Um, I'm not going to go through all these examples. We haven't got time, but what can it do? Basically, it can simulate a breeding program. So exactly the, the speed breeding program or some program like that, it can simulate all of the steps and processes in there. Uh, the difference is that you have to define some genes and recombine those genes. You have to have some gene positions or genetic positions when you do those simulations. So I'll explain to you what you need to know um, to, to use a program like that. But its main purpose is two things. One is strategic. So another um, guy who works for CIMIT, Jiankang Wang, JK Wang, W-A-N-G, is based in CIMIT in Beijing. Uh, look for some publications by Zhang Kang. He's published quite a lot of work using QGene in a strategic sense. So he looked at the CIMIT breeding program, the whole CIMIT breeding program, spent a lot of time talking to the breeders, and they summarized it um, in terms of its major genetics and the, the heritabilities and the traits that are involved in the breeding program. And you don't have to be perfect about this because what you're interested in is in simulating change or difference. So, they ran the breeding program with and without bulks, for example, or with and without double haploid. And then they can calculate the um, opportunity for accelerating breeding by changing methods. So that's in a strategic sense. You can also use it in a tactical sense if you want to design a marker integration program where you've got a lot more information about the, the topic. So, and like I said, I haven't got much time to talk about all those, but if you start looking for papers with QGene, and my name, or Jung Kang Wang's name, or Mark Cooper, or Dean Podlick, um, P-O-D-L-I-C-H, he's the PhD student who did the work, then you'll find a whole bunch of those papers. Um, so what you've got to do is define this GE system, create a population, you define a breeding strategy, and then you can run it. And again, another thing I haven't got time to talk about is that we've done a bit of work in, in sorghum with this, so don't put the word wheat, all right? Otherwise, you'll only get the wheat applications of, of QGene. But we did quite a bit of work in sorghum in the, about 10 years ago um, with this tool where we had a crop simulation model embedded inside QGene. So we were actually simulating physiological traits and yield and so on, where, but where the genetics was being driven by by QGene and the breeding program, so we could simulate whole breeding programs. It requires a fair bit of computer power to do that. We're still doing that kind of work. We've got some stuff we're hoping to publish in the next year or so. Um, but these days, we've got 10,000 processes to help us, so we can do sort of 20, 40 million simulations a day, so we can get through this stuff pretty easily. <clears throat> so I already talked about strategic simulation and tactical simulation. So Things like if you wanted to look at genomic selection, you could, you could 
you could set up some scenarios of some assumptions about the genetics of a breeding program and the G by E in a breeding program and see whether how would genomic selection help you or not help you in that situation. Um, or if you want to use it tactically, you might have a specific gene you're trying to introgress or utilise and you want to work out how to use that. So I'll just summarise what it can do. It's diploid, so, and it can do multiple alleles. Um, it can do wheat because those 21 chromosomes are reasonably independent. Um, it's not very good with things like sugar cane, so we don't use it for that. You define additive dominance and epistasis effects. You can handle pleiotropy um, and G by E, and you can put markers into the system. Um, I think I'll skip over what you need to do. This is some of the, the interface and some links into tools like Flapjack. So we built some tools that help you, once you've set the files up, you can start to manipulate the genetic model, understand where all of your causal genes are positioned and, and how it might work. So, but you can still use this tool, even if you don't know all of the underlying genetics in your program, you can set something up that matches more or less the kind of variability you're working with and experiment with a strategic sense. If you want to use it tactically to tell you what to do, then of course you have to know something a lot about the genetics. Um, these are some of the breeding methods it can do. Um, in fact, it doesn't have hybrids on here, but it also deals with, with hybrid production, so we use it in maize simulation as well. Uh, but it can use all of these standard types of systems. Uh, I think I'll skip over the information. You need a lot of information to run it, so it's not a trivial um, process. It can also handle a lot of different types of crosses. Um, <coughs> and these are the main application modules. There's one that's on inbred line development, one that's on hybrid, and one that's on macro-assisted recurrent selection. And I think um, Jung Kung's also got a version on genomic selection, which is really just a modification, this last one. Uh, but he and I haven't been working together much in the last couple of years. We haven't been in a project together, but I, I've been trying to find an excuse to catch up with him and see where it's up to. So the easiest way to get your hands on this is to um, either email me or email Jung Kung Wang at cgiar.org. Uh, find, find him at Simmons, and then someone rings me right in the middle of my talk. Sorry about that. Um, I think I might just leave it there, Lee, because if, if we start getting too much into this, it'll, it'll be too complicated. I think Mark's got a lot of important things to say to people here. Um, and uh, this is just, I'll leave it here. This is sort of an example of the kind of information that you would capture um, in these. And Andreas has probably ring me back again in two seconds, so I probably should sit down. Okay.